Welcome, I'm Kenneth Andre, Tango Jitsu Master and Mystic Ninja. So in this video, I want to give some understanding to some things I said in my previous video, okay? <laughs> I referred to God as my wife, okay? And reviewing the video, I know, I know within myself, I said it naturally, or sometimes I do get things backwards, but in this case, it doesn't matter. And so this morning it was playing on my consciousness to give some explanation, okay, or try to give some understanding. And it's not easy to articulate and convey um, the mysteries and, or should I say, the truth behind the mysteries and the different translation between phases and states which looking upon from the surface it looks like a contradiction but there's not and so <laughs> I'm going to try and do something that's quite hard for me to do and let's try to give understanding um, to the things that I've learned and received from spirit and to give some insights into God because many have anthropomorphized God as someone in the cloud, someone in heaven, condemning everyone. But that's not true. If you listen to your, should we say, messages in the Bible, and you really seek wisdom and understanding in trying to get to know God, you're going you're gonna to be blown away. So, I put a few things together. Again, everything I say and do is for a reason. And I'm the certain material or subjects that I do talk about to your average religious belief um, system out there. You're, you are not going to like the things that I say. And that's why I use scripture as a reference and authority in the things that I do say. And I do go into a lot of ancient texts. But people, they can read off, there is many that can read off scripture by heart, but they have no idea what it's saying. Only spirit can reveal to you the precepts with the holy living spirit that gives greater revelation, Okay. Your pastors behind the pulpit, they're not going to be able to help you, all right? What I've gone through over these 11 years is all written in the Bible. I have been fulfilling scripture. Now, one can only give what one is. I'm, I'm sharing my experiences, but I'm also aware there's many layers to scripture. And there is certain events that do occur in the collective during certain ages in the cycles that I am bearing witness to as well, okay? So I said in my previous video that the father is my wife and people will, will, will think, did he just say that? <laughs> and so I did put a, a, a caption on there, but I, on certain devices, it doesn't come up. So that's why I feel compelled to get on here and give some explanation, all right? Because if you go over my previous videos, you will hear that I refer to myself as the wife and my father as the husband. And in my previous video, it I flipped it, and that's true, all right? So I'm going to try and give some understanding, right? In Galatians... Correlation, correlus, uh, correlations, Colossians, sorry, 116, that's because I've been right now, I'm doing these notes, <laughs> sometimes I rush, yeah, 116, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created 
through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things consist now let me say this jesus said this is the most important hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one ditch monetary six four okay it's all spirit you must get this in your head first and foremost all is spirit all is god okay ditch monetary 32 39 see now that i myself am he there is no god beside me i put to death and i bring to life i have wounded and i will heal and that there and no one can deliver out of my hand there's only god in this play as i mentioned in my previous videos ditch monetary 435 you were shown these things so that you would know that the lord is god there is no other besides me and so and what this scripture is referring to is in connection with your experiences and i'm going to cut i'm going to uh, come from my experiences so i've gone through certain processes and noticed what i was going through was to talk was uh, revealed in the bible I was fulfilling script and I realized God had grabbed me and took complete control of me and stripping me of everything and disconnected me from this world. But before I go on about that, so again, back to why I referred to God as my wife. Now, in there's, and I have mentioned this in my previous videos, God has. God refers to himself in scripture as a mother too. Okay. He says, oh, he will look after Israel like a mother. There's these verses when you read it, it's, it's like he's coming across literally saying, I'm the mother of Israel, of you. Okay. Because this is Israel, Zion. Okay. The, the heavens and earth. When you start paying attention to the scripture, when God is referring to himself and he comes in many forms, which, again, the Bible says that and Jesus Christ changes forms. The Bible tells you that. Now, I, I wrote something down here as a metaphor to try and give some understanding. Right. What part or compu computer component is a computer? OK. Or is a computer a computer without all its components? Computer with all its, sorry, a computer is only a computer with all its working components. An operator, all is needed complete for the imagination and work of that computer right there's many components going on in here and many functions many uh, states and so when the father talks about going into the secret chambers okay when jesus referred to one of his followers this is your mother which was jesus's mother but jesus is lord jesus christ on the cross was god and so I, I, well let me just say and then you've got the mystery of the Trinity, which I've already talked about in my previous slides. The Father, the Son, the Word and the Holy Living Spirit. I've sh I've revealed the function of the Trinity that's in us to be individualized and to become as he is. You need the Trinity. So there's a lot of components going on in here. And so when you as the Father. OK remember everything was for him and by him and he talks about the seed okay the seed that plants the woman the womb okay so your consciousness plants the seeds into the subconscious which is receptive non-selective you are selective right and you select the thoughts the seeds through your desires your belief system and you impregnate yourself 
right? But then your self is rejected from the mother, your subconscious, which is the giver, which is also referred to as the Lord. As you read the Bible, all is from the Lord. Can you see what I'm saying? All right. So when I flip that, um, flipped that saying yesterday, my my father is my mother, and the soul. The soul is female, which is the wife to the father, and then through applying yourself with imagination and your creativity it flips there's a state where it flips and you're given gratitude it gets complex which in the bible in the torah when you listen to the full it's a complex full there's many components many states and many phases that's in you you are a temple of god and he says all is in you and you're going to know the fullness of god so when i refer to god as my mother my wife my father i'm right it's all one this is why he says do not make any image onto the father i'm not making an image i'm just should we say referring to a state that is altogether one in being and imagination spirit mind i hope this makes sense okay this is the hardest thing to articulate to articulate and convey all right and God is before us. It, we are the heaven and earth, our cubic reality. And I see it's all spirit. And I see God in front of me. I also hear him inside of me and in my activities of imagination. Okay. And so which one is he? Well, he's all of it. He's the all in all. And so the scripture to give you an understanding to a degree if you are really seeking the Lord and understanding, he reveals these attributes, these states, these faces and operations through symbolism. How else are you going to explain the operations of consciousness, of spirit, of imagination in accordance with planting seeds for manifestation where you do it through symbolism? I hope this makes sense. OK. Listen to this. 1 Samuel 2, 6. The Lord brings death and gives life. He brings down to shield and rises up. Again, it's all God. Now, I've mentioned that the Father, it says in the Bible, judges no man. And it's true. Jesus says, I judge no man. I've come to save the world. OK, not to condemn it. But there is a judge and that's man. OK, or Satan who is the accuser and adversary, okay? And he's, Satan's seat abides in man. Man is the beast, and there's the beast and the harlot, and you've got the the, um, the firefront and behemoth. These are the masses and the governments, okay? And God's created it all. It's a womb, it's a matrix, and it's the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and it's all for a purpose. And it is a world of darkness, and people are lost in the pit, the matrix, and so when you start to wake up, and I will say, I'll give you an insight. When you start to wake up, it's the Lord's day and it's a terrible day. OK, I'll, I'll elaborate a bit more on that. But before I do, again, in fact, I'll do that with what I was going to say, which I was going to come back to. I mentioned earlier. <laughs> OK. So if the father judges no one, Jesus judges no one. Then where's your judgment coming from? It's your bad and good imagination and belief from your mind and heart that places you in a state without wisdom and seeking God and understanding in you. OK, if you don't do this, you're going to be lost in the realms, in the pit. All right. Infinite states, good and bad. This is why the fearing of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. Your I am. Seek God within you. He says, I wish they seek me, even though I'm not far. But because they do not seek me, they hurt themselves. Because you're the temple of God. People are going around in, with this 
biological quantum computer without a clue how it works. And then I wonder why f they're in these horrible states. It says my people die for lack of knowledge. All right. Again, many are going around as barren women with no spirit. They're completely asleep, dead, playing these avatars subject to all the manipulation and influences of external agencies. And when you find out where you are, it's horrific. But this is the realm. OK, and those who left their first estate are heaven. Those who sinned, even the angels, as it says, they are cast into this realm. Now, Father has consigned this, that you would sin and, dis and be disobedient and be a rebel. So you would come into knowledge and wisdom and the relationship of God through one man, all sin. And for another, we are forgiven, redeemed and saved. It's a wonderful process, a divine process where you go through the seven eyes of the lamb. You notice the seven eyes of the lamb in the book of Revelation. What are they? Well, you can find them out through scripture. And when you find out what they actually mean, and what you've been going through, you realise the scripture is talking about your whole journey, your whole psychological journey in this realm. It's absolutely genius. Right. Let me go on. <laughs> John 14, 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And I've reversed this. It's funny. I'm going to keep reversing things. I've noticed when I'm doing my research, I reverse things because we live in a world where everything's backwards, upside down. And I noticed working with spirit, if he shows me things and flips it around, it gives me greater understanding. It's it's incredible. So that was John 14.5. I'm now going to do, I'm now going to say John 14.4. You know the way to the place where I'm going. I've mentioned this already in my previous slide about the rapture about the trans transformation the trans uh, translation being homponto taken out changing form okay moving into higher realms going up and i said we know i we those who are truly in spirit in christ we know our father and we know where we're going okay if there was this a rapture event, which is a ponzo, which is a snatching up at the last trumpet, a transition. It's like a graduation. We're about to leave this cycle because God is our provider, our protector, our father. He's our everything. He's our first love. And we turn to that spirit and he's always been with us. And so it's our time to move on for his namesake. That's why he's put us through so much, which I'll talk about in a minute. So. I, like I said, I know where I'm going. If so, if you were to ask, do you believe in a rapture? And you say, yeah. Well, where are you going? And you don't know. Well, I don't know. Well, we should know. OK, the Bible says you should know God and you're going to know God because he's going to break you and rip you to pieces and build you up for his namesake. He does it and he's going to guide you through it. And then he says, I'm going to save you. I'm going to heal you through the blood of the lamb and pure and with his pure pure waters okay cleanse you we should know where we're going how do we know this is why this is brought up because we've been doing the works in imagination with our father who is our builder of our heavenly eternal home he said look let your hand not be idle jesus is coming to reward okay those who have done the works what works now this goes back to revelation when he says i know your works your charity your faith your your loyalty in that but i still hold this one thing against you you hold the indoctrination of the nicolaines the religious belief systems in which he hates he says go do the first works which is seeking wisdom and seeking the kingdom which when you find it's in you, then how are you going to operate in that kingdom, which is in spirit, in the heavens, for imagination? Because he is our builder. He is our gardener. He is our carpenter. OK, all up in Eden here, first and foremost, 
Hence, I know where I'm going because of the works I've been seeing the Father do, do with me in the beginning of my awakening. So I know where I'm going. I, it's like my son said something to me, which is quite funny. I was talking about certain subjects during this period. And he said, well, I don't want to go to heaven and just sit in front of a phone throne with God just shining this big light. Like, I'd be bored. <laughs> I said, I, I, I know, son, I would not either. OK, you're not to have any other gods before you. I, I, you must be honest and be yourself. Right. I would not be happy being who I am and what I've gone through with God to just then go and sit in front of a big shining light. OK, I'd be sat I'd be sat next to others saying this is good. Isn't it? No. All right. That's not going to happen, because if you pay attention to the scripture, it tells you that your mansion is your own, your eternal heavenly home. These are the mansions. All right. It's all pointing to here. And God wants to fulfill your heart. When you when when we translate and we're going forward, he gives a promise, the promise of the crown of life, of the living waters of the land that we serve the Lord Jesus Christ day and night, which is our imagination. So he fulfills our hearts and brings us healing with the root fruits of the spirit. Well, with the things he's promised you that are held up in heaven that he can't wait to give you. How is he going to do that if you're just stuck, sat in front of a, a throne? OK, with everyone else. It doesn't work like that. You've got to get rid of your religious dogma, indoctrination. You, at the end of the day, as it says in the Bible, you are glorifying the Father. You're going. He's going to make you as he is. If you listen to scripture, he's literally died for you. He's given his life for you so you will become as he is. He didn't want you just to sit in front of him. It's like, as a parent, you don't want your children to become you. You want them to be better and teach him as much as they can and give him everything that you have and there's no difference with the father okay right keep going on a bit i've got to move on <clears throat> so the great day of the lord is near new uh, sorry the great day of the lord the great day of the lord is near Coming quickly, listen, the day of the Lord, then the cry of the mighty will be bitter. All right. The day of the Lord. Back in the year 2011, excuse me, I'll just get a quick drink. Getting a dry throat. The day of the Lord. Back in the year 2011, I'm going to talk in regards to my experience waking up individually. Now, that's not to say that there's certain events that don't happen on a collective level during a certain time. OK, for there is a time for everything, as it says in the scripture, there's a time for peace and a time for war, a time for love and a time for hate. There's these set times. I know there's many people that are saying there's the, these seals that are open upon the world. They don't open upon the world. They're open within you. The seven chakras, the, you are the book. So. I'm going from that experience. However, that doesn't mean that judgment doesn't come upon the world because that judgment is not from the father and the son. They're here trying to save as many as they can during a certain age. Because God has ordained his children come into the system to learn of the tree of knowledge, known of good and evil. OK, the two spheres, the tree that's in the mind. OK, and so during a certain age, the darkness the evils, the profanities get really bad. OK, the enemy take a bigger bite of the apple than they should have. They cross the line and a rescue mission starts to happen. This is known as the harvest after Armageddon, all in the Bible. OK, and God keeps his children safe. And we bear witness to the scripture, as in 
the living word that's unfolding within us and what we are bearing witness on the world stage. Okay, against the accuser, Satan. So back in the year 2011, for me personally, it was my Lord's Day. And it was horrific because I started waking up, questioning everything and having everything stripped from me. It was horrific. Listen to this. Then they will look at the earth, look to the earth and see only distress and darkness and gloom of anguish. And they will be driven into outer darkness. Okay. I just want to share that Isaiah 8.22. When I started waking up, I was looking at this world completely different. I, I mean, I've always known it's been harsh, and that's why I've become this ultimate ninja soldier warrior, because I knew of the nasty nature of this world, because of my experiences as a kid. But now, excuse me. Sorry about that. I didn't want to get disturbed. But now I'm seeing a world on a whole different level because I, I've got, because spirit has revealed to me this knowledge, this wisdom, revealing where I am. And so it's become bitter, but, uh, well, and through my journey, through my awakening, I was, should we say, cast into outer darkness. Oh, well, should I say, no, let me say that again. I could see the darkness because the light, was now in me whereby I received the treasures of darkness I received yeah that's the best way of putting it I received the treasures of darkness now understanding of the tree of knowledge good and evil and man this world is freaking evil all right I mean we are psychologically built up for self-annihilation obliteration we are many are in oblivion oblivion and they don't even know about it and you can see the psychological engineering that is corrupt. It's it's absolutely oh, overwhelming. Okay, watching my words. And many have no idea. They cannot see it. They're not even aware of it. Okay, they're so sleep, so dead. Right. It's no matter what I say, there's this fail. And it says they got this turban along that around the head. OK, this fail. They cannot see it. They, they cannot hear my words. This is why Jesus spoke in parables. He said, this is for you, not for them. They're not ready. They're so fast asleep. They're only interested in their gadgets and all the vials of the world. They love eating the fruit off it. OK, and that's why. They're referred to as locusts that come out the pit, eating all the bread, the wheat, the bread of Christ, because all these in Christ, even those who are dead, we're dead in Christ. And so the locusts are coming out the pit, eating all the bread. OK, it, if you grasp the symbolism of it, it's absolutely incredible what's going on. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 37. How awful that day will be. None will be like it it is the time of jacob's distress but he will be saved out of it from the year 2011 i was jacob okay i went through the pattern of jacob and it's been a long time 11 years i've been stripped of everything as i've mentioned in my previous slides and I'm grateful and humble. It's been the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And I've received such wonderful knowledge, all glory and praise to my living father. OK. To the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, the true son is David, the mystery who does the will of the king, which is all within you. The Bible is your biographical a psychological drama of you as god okay dreaming this journey okay fulfilling a script a book jesus christ said 
I have done many things, right? If you were to write a book about all the, the things I've done, the earth itself could not contain the books, all right? It's all about Jesus Christ. There's only Christ in this play. There's only God. And so how do you explain God having a human experience and then going to wake up in the expansion of himself? Because he says, behold, I am alive forevermore. And hold, the I was dead. I was asleep. This is the Lord saying this. And there's five verses that says, why are you sleepeth, Lord? Arise, cast us not off forever. All right, five verses. It talks about God being asleep because there's only God in the play. And then he says, behold, I am alive. I was dead, but I am alive and awake and forevermore. And I hold the keys of Hades and of death. And he comes out in the expansion of himself because he keeps birthing himself out of these wombs, these matrix. OK. So how do you explain this whole process through symbolism? That's why the Bible is so riddled with allegories, symbols, characters, names. OK. It's not it's not historical. It's the living word, as Jesus Christ says, it's not the the Bible becomes alive. The living word is within you. Can't stress that first and foremost. Now, I can talk from my experience. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not trying to push my belief system on onto you. I'm just sharing what it is that I have gone through because it's asked us to shine our light and not put it under a bush. There is events that is unfolding upon the world stage, which, do you know what? There's nothing new under the sun. OK, there's always chaos. In the world, in Shiel, in this realm. OK, doesn't matter if one. Old beast, so I've got to be careful what I say, one beast system, OK, fades away. Another one will just be erected. Because this is shield and it will always have its warlocks, wardens and. Should we say them entities, kings of the underworld? All right. The gods uh, of, of the underworld, these entities that take these positions. There is only one God. All right. But he has allotted these certain individuals in certain positions for a reason because he is the creator it's always play and he does have these angels that come into the system to help prop the system up of shield that's why he erected the pyramids because it's an altar and a pillar to describe this realm it's shield it's a realm of distress of wrath and tribulation okay and at first you don't see it you don't know no better no different okay because You've accepted the presentation of the world that's been presented to you since a child. And you've been spiritually robbed, your light darkened, and as an angel, you're being transformed into abomination. And through flattery and deception and smoke and mirrors, you go on this treadmill, you go on this journey in this realm, and you see all the horrors of the world until the appointed time okay and then the father will say right enough i'm here it's the lord's day it's time to show you and it's going to be horrific because you're going to see that you've been lied to about everything okay it's all strawberry fields none of it is real but while you're in it it's real and while you're in the, your relationships and why and when you have these states or obligations these things that um used to make up your life it's, it's going to be overwhelming and as it says in the bible who can stand it i know with myself i think how have i not gone mentally insane how have I not had a mental breakdown okay I, there's been times that i've wanted to end it it's it's been unbearable but i know that spirit and this is thanks to me serving in the army again he's groomed me my whole life and there's passages where Jesus Christ says, you get up, soldier, you soldier on. Right. It's actually a scripture where he, he refers to you as a soldier. 
And I know as a soldier, you got to soldier on. You get your head down and you just keep going. And so I did. I couldn't have done any of this without spirit. I know that. That's why I do say all power, all praise, all glory to the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, which I have tattooed on my thigh because he's in here. He comes in a vesture dripping in blood. We are the vestures. We're full of blood. OK, we're the vessels. Christ comes in us. Through Mary, that's in us. And we go through a process where we're leaving Egypt, which is um, motive. All right. Then we need Elijah, the power to help us drive through these other um, states where we're going through Jacob's trouble, etc. That's why there's a, um, a verse where you see on the Mount Sinai, uh, you're, if it's Sinai, one of the mountains where you have Elijah, Moses, Jesus, you have them all meet up on this mountain and you'd think how is that possible unless there's time travel or so, well that's because it's all in here of course all the states can end up meeting all together at a certain time for a certain process it's all in here with the temple of god do you see what i'm saying right i better stop it there because this is getting long why you're in the world it, they, everyone's asleep. It doesn't matter what's coming, so to speak. I don't mean that disrespectfully. What I mean is, yes, there's big events, but it's all a controlled system and it does get worse and it gets really bad. But if you're not paying attention and you're that asleep, I, I, I throw it back to when I was asleep, I would not, I had no idea what was going on. Anything could have happened to me. I wouldn't have had a clue. And that's what I'm seeing today. OK, and you can't seem to get across to them. About. Getting the house in order, seeking Christ. And so I do sur surrender to God. I won't let it be a burden. I'm not here to save the world. I'm here to shine my light. So those brothers and sisters, those are in 144,000. They can relate with similar mystical experiences that they go through which is helping in the adoption into the body of Christ. This is why it's important that we shine the light, that when God chooses someone, because he says, you have not chosen me, I've chosen you. Out of all the people of the world, I've chosen you. And we are called by name, and he has a remnant, an elect. So there's a lot going on. And we play our part into helping others and brothers and sisters to graduate, to come into the fold and to get ready for the wonderful translation, transformation. OK, God is in control. Seek wisdom. If you're listening to this, it's for a reason. Go over these videos. It's all free. Fill your vase, vases up with wisdom and be ready for a wonderful transformation, a graduation, a lifting up. OK, and then. Watch, watch, watch for the wonderful mystical transformation that would occur with you and your cubic reality for the new heaven and earth, the new age, the new future, where you know where you're going because of the works that's been going on in here. I'm Kenneth Andre, Tango Jitsu Master and Mystic Ninja. Love you guys. Have a good day.